You know, I didn't think that I'd be doing these kind of runs already, but here it is. Beating the game with only Sir John Pollenstiff. <laughs> now, if you don't know what this iconic weapon is, uh, y you can just go look it up for yourself. I'm, I'm not going to say it here because YouTube might demonetize me. Luckily, Cyberpunk has a censorship switch that turns this into something completely different, thankfully, so I can play through this game with this weapon without getting demonetized. And honestly, that's the challenge. We're just being the game with this thing. Now, I let my channel members vote on the next runs I should do, and this one almost tied with the Mario run, and I have a lot of comments saying I should do it. So rather than going through another section of polls, I decided to just do it also because my moderator won't shut up about it anyways that's about it but before we get into the video we have a sponsor today i know look ma i'm a real youtuber now today's sponsor is none other than the legend itself raid shadow legends now although i've seen this title on so many youtube videos myself i think it's actually amazing how long this game has been around showing that there is a fairly large fan group to this and one thing that they're starting to do now is deep dive into lore and backstories of their characters. They even started an animated series called Raid Call of the Arbiter, which is a limited series. New episodes for it are going to be coming out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time until July 20th. Episodes 1 and 2 have gotten really great reception already from the fans of Raid. I actually went and watched the first couple episodes, and to be real, sometimes I wish other companies would do this where we'd get to see more background lore for the characters and heroes that we maybe have come to love. Along with this animated series, there's also going to be lore videos and behind the scenes content. And speaking of lore, they even added a lore tab to all the champions. So you can deep dive and read about the champions that you've unlocked. And of course, with this animated series, Call of the Arbiter, they're going to be introducing a bunch of new champions, new lore, and activities for you to take part in. Also, just for logging into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th, you'll get one of the new playable legendary champions, Artak. Now, I've never picked up Raid before, but with this sponsorship, decided to give it a shot and Personally, I love min-maxing builds, making the best of the best I can, and I could see myself getting lost, just getting the perfect gear for the right champion. And if you're thinking of trying Raid for the first time, make sure to use the link in the description down below or the QR code on the screen to get your free epic champion, Drake, as well as some other useful stuff. Anyways, I just want to say a massive thank you to Raid again for sponsoring the video. And with that, let's get into the main video. Booting up the game, I put it on the hardest difficulty and decided to go for the Nomad intro just because I haven't done it in a while. Didn't really have any ideas for a character, so I just chose one and hit randomize a couple times and then put my starting attributes into body, reflexes, and technical ability. Getting into the Nomad intro, we get introduced to the world, get to know how rude people can be and how friendly people can be, and then get into a car chase. After making a new best friend, we jump into the first main mission, and I use a mod called Iconic Weapon Unlocker to give myself the weapon, Sir John Pollensif. <laughs> you see, the only way to get this weapon is to do a certain set of quests a certain way, and then you have to get it after completing the mission, the heist. So I'd have to play more than half of this game before I'd finally get it, so I figured I'd rather just mod it in. Now again, with the censorship on, this is what the game turns this into. So you might just have to use your imagination, or, or maybe don't, you know, that's probably smarter not to. As you would expect, bringing an iconic weapon into the starting missions makes this game pretty easy, except for the fact I need to get point blank to use it. So fast! So fast! What? Yo, this thing's actually kind of crazy. What the heck? Ooh, that was close. That was really close. <laughs> With Sandra Dorset safe, we get into the driving segment and let them drive into a wall. After Jackie takes us home and we wake up the next morning, we head over to Vix, I get my zoomy eyes go meet up with Dex, and talk about the things we need to do the mission, the heist. Now again, because I do want to get this weapon as soon as possible the legit way, not through a mod menu, I decide to go meet up with Meredith Stout before going into All Foods. I then grab the credit chip from her and use said credit chip to pay for the flathead. With doing so, the malware on the credit chip kills a couple guys in here, and so we get into combat. 
<laughs> Got to set. I think it's a glitch that swings so fast. It might be because I'm spamming it so fast. I think that's it's how it's supposed to swing. This thing is crazy. Hey, Brick. Sorry, who are you talking about? Ooh, those are explosives. I have no stamina. I need stamina so bad. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, get a nice little boss fight now, so we get to fight Royce. Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, I'm not dead. Yo, Jackie, get him. <laughs> I can't get close to him. This is bad. No. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ow. Jackie, Jackie. Oh. This is tough, actually. <laughs> this is weirdly tough. Need, just need my health to come back. One sec. Wow, that hurts. Ow. I heard him charging up. Okay. Thanks, bro. With Royce down, we head outside to go talk with Meredith Stout, and she tells us she likes the way we operate, letting us know that uh, there's going to be a moment later on where we can get this weapon the legit way. With that finished, I head over to Lizzie's bar, and we find where Johnny Silverhand is. Now again, because I have a really powerful weapon for early game, I just head straight to the heist and jump into the mission. After Delamain takes Jackie and I to Compeki Plaza, we're forced to put our uh, weapons away, and immediately mod menu to give myself another one, and walk through the security gates proudly with it. I then show Hideo Kojima what I have, and we make it up to our room and use the flathead to hack the netrunner in the building. Then Jackie and I head up to the penthouse, grab Johnny Silverhand, and before hopping into the pillar, I make sure to have the weapon out so the vibrating stays present the entire conversation here. You don't hear anything, Takemura. You don't. You don't hear this buzzing. <laughs> no, how could you? And with Saburo uh, taking a nap, we hop into combat. <laughs> serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> Beware, the Sir John Pollen stuff. This thing almost sounds like it could be like a synth sound effect for the song that's going in the background right now. <laughs> no, no, heal, heal. Ah. Oh, the uppercut? <laughs> You crouch before you do it, you do kind of like an uppercut, that's amazing. You're surprised it doesn't have a stab attack? No! <laughs> oh! No! Dang, this thing's destroying the robot. <laughs> 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 
Making it down to Delamain, we hop into the driving segment, where I once again just have to play it out as normal. After sending Jackie off to the major leagues, we go meet up with Dex and jump into the Johnny Silverhand flashback. Because I can't use anything other than Johnny's gun, we're just gonna kinda skip over this. Waking up in our own body, Takemura shoots Dex, and we jump into yet another driving segment, and after Vic saves our life, we find that Johnny's in our head and get released back into the open world. I start by meeting up with Takemura to have a quick conversation, and then because there's some perks that I want, I run around the open world collecting the six free perk points that are just in the open world. I find this man in a car, and then decide to run around and just jump into a bunch of missions to level up, gain some money, and just get set up for the future. Now, I'm grinding levels pretty hard because I really want a Sandy. You see, I've been having this really consistent glitch where there's just this fan in one of the missions that likes to just spin around and I want to land on it really bad. And someone said, what if I could slow time with a Sandy and potentially time a landing on top of it? So that's kind of a weird goal that I'm chasing here. So I do quite a bit of leveling up, quite a bit of grinding to try to get closer to that level requirement for the free Sandy that exists on this beach here. While running around, I get the call from Takemura and decide to go talk to Judy about where Evelyn went. Before closing up my stream for the day, I go meet up with Takemura, get through the conversations with him, and then decide to go head up to Clouds and start those missions. And of course, I'm not avoiding combat, so I go in swinging. Oh, they're gonna take it away again. Willing to spread their legs. Okay, we're gonna, we just gotta gift it to ourselves again. There we go. Oh? Eh, sure. Here. Dang. <laughs> Bop. After finding where Evelyn was taken to, I go meet up with Fingers, and picking it up the next day, Judy and I jump into this brain dance and find where Evelyn was taken to. Let's go. Oh, I love having double jump this early. Come here. Gosh, this weapon, the sound effects is so good. Got it, Judy. I'm trying. No! <laughs> anything useful <laughs> we got them all with evelyn safe judy and i review the brain dances she recorded with that mission wrapped up i know i want to grind out some more levels because i still haven't hit the requirement to use the sandy yet so i run around just doing some more missions decide to go after the cyber psycho and with the power of sir john stun lock this guy till he's down after knocking him out i get the text message from meredith stout basically telling me i can go pick up the legit version of this weapon and uh, yes, I'm not showing that in this video. Now, I forgot that you actually don't get this weapon unless the censorship is off. And so, because I wanna keep my video monetized, I keep the censorship on, mod menu myself a brand new one. That way it is at the level I'm currently at. With that wrapped up, I'm high enough level to equip the Sandy, as well as a bunch of the cyberware I've just been finding in the open world, and then decide to go pay Rogue for the information on Anders Hellman. I then make my way to meet up with Pan Am, let my car disappear, and we head off to the avocado camp. Now, the whole reason I've wanted this Sandy is because there's been a fan at this part in this mission that likes to just hang around. And thankfully, it's still here. Oh, yeah, yes, the fan, oh, it's closer now. Oh, it didn't go further out. What do we do? It looks kind of slow. That's good for Sandy's sake. Okay. Oh, I think this is doable. Oh, okay. This is going to be kind of hard. Oh, okay. I can mantle it still. Okay. Oh. All right. One more try here. We'll have one more shot. And then I think I'm just, yeah, I think that this is a, uh, this is kind of a lost cause. 
I mantled it with the Sandy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> oh, that was such a disappointing outcome, but I, I wrote it. That's, that's a win for me. Now, although that wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, I was still satisfied that I accomplished my goal. After Pan Am and I get everything set up for the surprise attack, we turn on the lights and get to work. All right, we going in. Sandy. The driver has I was clicking heal. <laughs> Little bonk on the head. And as usual, I'm not avoiding combat, so Pan Am and I go after Nash. Hey, uh, you still have your sniper, by the way. And I'm awkwardly rubbing her sniper all over her car. <laughs> and I did not get Nash. That's not a safe not way to drive. I agree. It's not very safe. Okay. Take this, Nash. And this. I hate. I hate the sniper. Okay, sniper down. Okay. <sighs> Happy. With the power of Sir John making pretty easy work of these guys, Panem and I finish up the mission, and she says she wants to sleep on an idea she has for getting Anders Hellman. My burritos are stuck. <laughs> okay. Hold up, Pan Am, wait. And after waking up the next morning, I immediately jump into the mission with Pan Am and go after Anders. We then hack this power station, turning it into an EMP, setting off the EMP to knock down the AV and watch it dance. We then make it to the crash site and because Sir John deals electrical damage, it absolutely demolishes these robots. We then hop on the bikes, heading after Anders, make a pit stop at this airport to clear out some guys. And of course, anytime I find a new glitch, I keep wanting to try it every run I boot up. Carries Guinevere. These trucks lead up past the hill to an old filling station. I wager that's where they're holding helmet. That's, that's really not what I expected. Oh, hey, it changed to the color you're supposed to own. An M station wagon. Is it underground? Oh, it's underground. Fascinating. Oh no. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I feel like we could do better still. That's pretty good though. Maybe we, maybe we get back on the bike. She just is like teleporting now. She's not like... I didn't even see her boost past me. That's weird. Okay, whatever. We'll move on. I think we're good. We grab Anders Hellman, have a nice conversation with him, and then decide to go follow up with Takemura to go hack the float. We survey the area, I jump into the back entrance and get to swinging. Seems like the, the three hits and then the charge to hit, it's good. No! <laughs> Dang. You have made a cock up. Arasaka reinforcements are here. 
Takamori, you can't say that. I think that's everybody. Oh, I still haven't even hacked the float. <laughs> Oh, okay. With the float hacked and this entire area cleared out, I make my way to the chapel to go meet up with Placide. I then make my way to the GIM and clear out this place of the animals gang. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Come here. Countered. All right. Uh, right. We don't need to hack the van. We just need to go into the fight. Go. Come at me. Bring it. Got her. Okay. All right. I know. I kind of want her to have the hammer, so I can just be countering her the whole time. Grab your hammer. No, dang it. Gosh. I'm trying to understand her moveset. Here, well, let's let's bring this out here, Matilda. Let's let's bring in the light so everybody can see, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. What you, what, huh, huh? Yo, I didn't think I could counter that. I wanted to try, though. <laughs> think she's had enough. I then make it to the Netwatch agent, knock him out because it's faster, and jump into the Johnny Silverhand flashback. We go through the flashback like normal and eventually jump into the dark web, meeting up with Alt. Jumping out of the ice bath, I immediately whip it out and get to swinging. Oh, kind of happened there. No. Never mind. <laughs> no, I went to the use healing. This is actually kind of tough because they're all just clustered together. No, no. Play a little more aggressive. Oh, Placide, hi, how are you? Okay, hi, nice to see you. <laughs> this is just kind of working, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. <sighs> Why'd they have to join in the fun? <laughs> yeah, let's just go. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> he went flying. See that? With Placide down, I decide to get to grinding some more levels, also to get Talking More to call me up. I go grab some cyberware, such as the blue skeleton, to boost my health, and then get the call from Takemura to do the mission, play it safe. I then run through all of this area, clearing out all the snipers, and eventually make my way to the fight with Oda. Take that. Ooh. We got blue. Classic and fire. Let's do blue. Quick save. Where are we going. Now, me. I have an attention. Been on a fuck. Oda. How you doing, Oda? Of course you're here. I warned you. <laughs> oh, I love that I can counter him so much. He will slice you like fish. Leave me. Ow. There he is. Come back here. Do 
dude, I'm, I'm countering the crap out of him right now. <laughs> Get back here. Quit running. <laughs> He's scared. <laughs> that was so fast. Hey. With Oda down, Takamura grabs Hanako, we meet up at this sketchy hotel, and then Arasaka shows up and we watch Takemura T-pose as usual. To not avoid combat, I jump up to save Takemura and make sure to clear everyone out before making my way out of the building. After making it out, we chat with Hanako and Johnny and we have the end of the game unlocked. Now because I'm playing with a weapon that honestly overly simplifies this game, I figure it only makes sense to do the secret ending. So I run to the afterlife, letting Johnny take control of my body, and then head off with Rogue to go after Grayson. After knocking Grayson down and getting Johnny's Porsche, we make our way to where Johnny's body was dumped and make sure to have the correct conversation to unlock the secret ending. Now the only issue with the secret ending is, it is the only ending that doesn't scale with you, instead it is capped at pretty much max level, so I know that I need a lot more levels before I can go and take it on. Starting up my stream the next day, I decided to get to grinding. And because I didn't want it to take me literally like 10 hours, I decided to use a mod to 10x my XP so we could grind through the levels in a actual reasonable time. And after hitting max level 50, I put all my attributes into 20 body, 12 reflexes, 18 tech, and 18 cool. With this attribute spread, it gives me access to a lot of really cool pieces of cyberware, the cold blood tree, as well as allowing me to upgrade Sir John all the way to legendary tier. Maxing out its DPS at 2,400. After running around grabbing some higher quality legendary gear in the open world, I head over to Embers to meet up with Hanako and start the end of the game. After getting through the cutscenes with Vic and Misty, we sit in front of Johnny for five minutes until he brings up his crazy idea of storming in the front door of Arasaka. Secret ending, let's go. Huh, you just discovered what it takes to become a legend. Grab your iron. Let's mobilize. <laughs> That's not my iron, Johnny. <laughs> okay, you have a brief second here where we can take consumables. Slam a burrito. Nuka Cola Fire. Let's take the health buff. Do we do stamina? Why not, you know? We wish you a pleasant day. <laughs> Careful. This is their house. Got a game plan all polished. <laughs> no. Yo, this thing is cracked. Oh. He'll have our access. So far, dude, this thing is insane. Holy crap. Bonk. <laughs> oh. oh, second heart, second heart, second heart. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Run, run, V. Run, run. Oh my gosh. I thought, oh. I forgot I had second heart. That scared me. Oh, these guys hit so hard. Okay, okay. First area down. So we get the 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 forced auto save, so we'll we'll basically be good from here on out if we die on accident. Let's refresh the burrito and drink. Oh, 
Hey, over here. Oh, those are the scary guns. Those are the really scary guns. Why did these ones hit so hard? Hit, hit, hit B, hit. <laughs> okay. Those guns, they burst. They just one tap. It's insane. so hard on this difficulty. It's insane. <laughs> Why are you running? Stop running! <laughs> oh, God. Huh? You want some, huh? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Countered. Oh, all right. Well, good thing we gotta we gotta save. The guy got one burst into me as I hit all those robots, and they all exploded because I'm doing electrical damage. Ah. <laughs> These are all the really hard hitting guys too with those guns. No? Oh, gosh. I'm coming for you, Smasher. <laughs> this does a, a... Smasher is weak to electrical damage, by the way. So, this thing doing mostly electrical damage and physical, it's... With the door? It should wreck him. Like, this should be by far the easiest part of this entire run. <laughs> or this entire ending. <laughs> the buzzing still in the cutscene. <laughs> Prepare to get smashed. Uh, he's doing his cutscene. <sighs> okay. Come on, finish up. Let's take this so we have healing while we're. Come here. You if you wish. I need Did he jump through the floor? Where'd he go? Survival Where is Rogue? Want it no part of this raid, you tut? Once I finish with you, I'll hunt her down. Come here. Stop running. <laughs> Oh, they all just disappear. Cool. <laughs> wow, that was so easy. <laughs> like, I knew it was going to be easy, but wow, that was... <sighs> nice. Okay. Is Meredith proud of me? No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't know I could keep this in this cutscene. Cat. Other cat. Jackie. Jackie, Jackie, look what I just beat the game with. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. This was definitely kind of a weird one, having to beat the game with this weapon, and obviously this weapon was actually insanely overpowered. I thought it was gonna be good, I just didn't expect it to be that good, so it was kind of a surprise to me. Again, if you watched all the way to the end, I wanna say a massive thank you. I appreciate you guys so much for staying around and watching my content. The next run I kinda have planned for myself is to do a Skyrim run. I'm letting my channel members vote on that right now, but we'll probably be starting it up very soon. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.